good morning to you we are now continuing with economy in the last class that is yesterday we have seen the background of basel norms how it started what compelled and what are the compelling circumstances and what is capital adequacy ratio what is tier 1 capital what is tier 2 what is risk weighted assets etc today we will see what do you mean by leverage ratio leverage ratio shows the put the financial position of your bank with reference to its debt vis-a-vis -vis capital that is assets it is calculated by dividing the tier 1 capital by consolidated assets i have already explained tier 1 capital which is very important which includes you know the common equity that is the original shares reserves retained earnings i have already told and other securities it is a very simple formula i that is used to evaluate the level of debts possessed by the bank and its access to the capability to repay the debt for example let us say if the bank lends 100 crore for every 10 crore capital reserve the leverage ratio is 10 10 crore divided by 100 crores that is 10% remember if they have lent 10 crores then they should have the capital asset of 100 crores so uh, sorry the 100 crores they can lend with the capital ca re reserve of 10 crore that means 10% is the leverage ratio remember the global leverage ratio is only 3% so more than 3 should be there in the leverage ratio now let us come back to what are the basel norms you know there are three basel norms basel 1 basel 2 basel 3 Basel 3 is the latest which should should have been implemented by 313 2019 now extended to 313 2020 now basel 1 was introduced in 1988 in india it was put into effect in 1999 basel 1 norms covered only the credit risk what is credit risk credit risk is when a party does not fulfill his payment obligation that is called credit credit risk now basel norm that is basel 1 norms did not include remember it included only credit risk it did not include market risk and operational risk even though under basel 1 norms capital adequacy ratio was only 8% for india rbi kept 9% regarding risk weighted assets remember regarding risk weighted assets basel 1 norms kept five kinds of credit risk namely 0 10 20 50 and 100 for example for government securities the risk is zero and for housing loan the risk is 50% for commercial loans and mudra loans the risk is 100% remember 100% basel one norms failed because of certain reasons now why did you fix switch over to basel 2 naturally unless you know basel 1 failed there is no reason to switch over to basel 
so now let us see what are the reasons for failure of basal 1 number 1 lack of risk sensitivity for example all borrowers were taken at the same footing whether it is ratan tata or vijay malaya for all commercial loans 100% risk was kept in fact there should be some discretion in assessing the risk and basel one norms followed one size fits all approach which is irrational this is the first fail all are kept equal neutral no that cannot be you should see the repaying capacity how if ratan tata or mukesh ambani and malaya you should discriminate this is number 1 secondly basel one norms concerned about the credit risk only market risk and reputational risk operational risk were ignored the same cir was kept the same capital adequacy ratio was kept for all banks for example let us say hdfc has only 2% npa and pnb had 9% npa yes bank had 12% mpa now remember for all the banks what is the capital adequacy ratio you have kept 9% how can you uh, keep the same car for all the banks here another mistake has been done this is irrational in these circumstances in 2004 basel 2 was introduced in india it was introduced in 2008 for foreign banks in india and indian banks outside india in 2009 it was applied to all scheduled commercial banks basel 3 was completed in 2014 this is the stage by stage introduction of basel 2 basel 2 remember most important basel 2 introduced three pillars three sorry three pillars what are the three pillars first pillar is minimum capital requirement that is car minimum capital requirement and the the same 8% 9% was kept as capital adequacy ratio the first pillar under first pillar the banks have to consider credit risk number 1 credit risk market risk and the operational risk the first pillar covers three risk credit risk operational risk and market risk as i have already told you the credit risk is the borrower defaulting the payment what is market risk market risk is repercussion of global slowdown what is operational risk operational risk is hacking of computers sudden failure of network system staff non non cooperation in these three risk remember three risk i have told you in these three risk operational risk is too difficult to assess remember you can assess market risk because it is obvious you can assess credit risk because because you know the person willful defaulter etc but operation risk was very difficult to assess this is one reason why basel 2 failed this is remember this is the first pillar then second second pillar is supervisory review that is review by the banks themselves and by rbi under this the bank should have a process to assess their capital requirement vis a vis the risk profile the bank will undertake the review first and the rbi will make a subsequent review normally you know the rbi expected that the bank should maintain minimum requirement minimum requirement and also some additional capital more than what is kept it was a expectation of the rbi which was not followed is some banks do not respond rbi was expected to take action by stopping the dividend payment or asking the banks to raise the additional capital or by ensuring 
close monitoring these are all the three tools they can ask the banks not to pay the dividend or they can ask the banks to keep additional capital and also they can ensure close monitoring by visiting by sending team etc the second pillar will also consider the systemic risk concentration risk strategic risk reputational risk and legal risk all these things are introduced in the second pillar that is second pillar will consider remember systemic risk what is systemic risk financial slowdown and it was not able to cap, uh, manage the ca ca capability to manage then what is concentration risk suppose you give the loan only to a particular item so let us say you have given loan 40% of the loan only to steel sector or 40% of the loan only in manufacturing sector so suddenly the steel sector collapsed so that is that is called concentration risk strategic risk suppose you take a decision that a new office should be opened abroad that has become failure so it is a strategic risk reputational risk pnb there cannot be a better example than this you know they normally banks are not afraid of even government or rbi etc if there is a sudden fall in their shares that is the tremendous effect on the banks because reputational risk is more severe than any other risk similarly legal risk suppose they are doing suppose you have suppressed you are a certain information as a result rbi has imposed a penalty on you then there is a reputational risk that is legal risk etc the third this is the second pillar the third pillar is the market discipline market discipline includes the bank should disclose the required capital adequacy ratio risk profile at least 12 twice, twice in a year they should make a review and they should disclose now question is how and why the basel 2 failed we have seen why basel 1 failed and basel 2 introduced now basel 2 what is the reason for failure of basel 2 and we are going to see basel 3 why basel 2 failed number 1 in 2008 you know lehman brothers and there is a complete slowdown in economy affected all countries especially usa and other european countries the reckless spending to sub prime borrowers exposed to the weakness in the banking sector remember reckless spending reckless lending and lehman brothers financial so many good banks have collapsed basel 2 allowed remember what what is the mistake in basel 2 basel 2 it allowed the banks to use their own models there is no review they themselves make a credit risk etc they will assess the risk profile they will make and to assess the risk and the capital adequacy ratio also they will themselves make it the risk profiles are faulty most of the risks because they, they they will not suppose um, you are let us say you are uh, asked to indicate your um, uh, confidential reports you will say extra uh, outstanding or excellent so nobody will be able to nobody will have the guts to say they are bad so the most of the risk, risk profiles were faulty and not only that most of the banks were optimistic basel 2 norms expected a strong regulator whereas rbi is not um, bad it is a good regulator but in usa federal reserve otherwise the 2008 slowdown would, have, would not have happened so investment banks failure itself indicate that the regulator was useless so basel 2 norm were inadequate in covering the market risk especially for investment banks this is the reason remember in these circumstances basel 3 was introduced remember every regulation is a product of crisis why regulation comes there is a crisis and there is a regulation so basel 3 was introduced in 2008 worldwide in india it was originally scheduled from 31st march 2019 now extended to 31st march 2020 these dates are very important remember basel 3 introduced remember the same three pillar extended here also but it was revised for each pillar they have included enhanced 
what did they included enhanced so three revised types of pillars were introduced one is enhanced minim minimum capital liquidity requirement number 1 number 2 enhanced supervisory review number 3 enhanced disclosure requirement all the three en enhanced remember minimum capital requirement also enhanced supervisory review also Ma disclosure requirement also enhanced so these are all the three pillars revised not same revised then basel 3 also introduced additional tier 1 capital additional tier 1 capital important remember out of following out of the following which are not included in basel 3 so eliminate the process it included additional tier 1 capital what is additional tier 1 capital which included cash which included equity share retained earning and reserves plus convertible security and also preference shares these are all additional capital they have to they have to yeah, they have introduced in basel 3 they have introduced tier 2 capital remember include supplementary capital which include the provisioning and the revaluation reserve what is provisioning provisioning means the amount of money kept aside for each non performing asset i remember to told you yesterday so what is gross sorry gross npa minus provisioning is the net npa remember we have seen gross npa minus provisioning is the net npa what is provisioning provisioning means the amount of money kept aside for each non performing asset now this revaluation review means yesterday i told you it is the gain derived by the banks because of the fluctuation in the exchange rates this is the revaluation reserve now basel 3 also also introduced remember what are all the introduced what are all introduced by basel 3 additional capital requirement number 1 number 2 basel 3 also introduced capital conservation buffer capital conservation buffer you know you, you are an economic student economic student so naturally you will know the economic cycle is combined with a, sometime it is very boom and sometime it is very lean so at the time when the economy is at the boom period you keep additional reserve and to be spent during the lean period that is called capital conservation buffer this is to ensure that the banks maintain a cushion of capital which can be drawn when the losses are incurred during a stressed period according to basel 3 remember the bank should maintain a ccb of capital conservation buffer of 2.5% comprising common equity there is common equity tier 1 capital at the zoom period that is when the credit growth is more keep additional ccb it will function as a cushion when there is a when there is a less credit growth during the during the lean period and when the npa is more you need not keep the ccb when the lean period and when the npa is more you need not keep the in ccb now basel 3 another important thing basel 3 also introduced you know counter cyclical buffer another important ccb this is counter cyclical buffer this is also ccb remember most importantly this is intended to protect the banking sector against loss which could be caused by the cyclical systemic risk sometimes the banks give excess credit recklessly so rbi can always step in and ask the bank to stop the bank to stop the excess reckless uh, lending and ask them to keep additional capital requirement when the credit growth is more so that the buffer is reduced when the cycle uh, cycle turns she said under basel 3 remember ccb that is the cyclical cyclic counter cyclical buffer is 0 to 2.5% 0 to 2.5% remember very simple easy to understand when the banks make reckless credit 
when the banks give the loans without any prudential observing without any prudential norms so the rbi can step in and ask them to keep additional capital requirement don't spend more you keep so much so this will be useful when the credit growth is less that is called cyclical uh, i mean what is called counter cyclical buffer both are ccb this is counter cyclical buffer most importantly counter cyclical buffer has not been introduced in india so far in india it has been kept to 1% the target is 0 to 2.5% in india it is kept at 1% remember under basel 3 a new liquidity coverage ratio under basel 3 another introduction a new liquidity coverage ratio and net stable funding ratio lcr and nsfr have been introduced what is lcr lcr is equal to high quality liquidity asset divided by total outflow over next 30 days multiplied by 100 see how much high liquidity ratio is there and what is the total outflow in the next uh, 30 years divide this and multiply by 100 that will give the ratio this is the high quality liquidity assets are remember gold share equity bond reserves and retained earning etc that is anything which can be converted into cash immediately is called high quality liquidity asset same thing remember this lcr is for the short term loans in the, if it is long term then it is called net amount of stable funding that is net amount of that is that is called net stable funding ratio net stable funding ratio it is net amount of stable funding divided by required amount of stable funding multiplied by 100 remember the difference is for both um, lcr and this one nsfr the difference is one is for short term another is for long term that is the most important thing you should remember under basel 3 the minimum cop, uh, common equity tier 1 has kept at 5.5% now another another important thing they have added what is that another most important which has been added now it has been uh, you know the that is domestically imp- systematically domestically and systematically important banks too big to fail these banks are called too big to fail because you know bank of england that was very strong federal reserve it was not effective so the 2008 problem came because the banks were not very strong so the basel 3 introduced what is known as globally systematically important banks this will be finalized by banking that is what is called basel committee on banking supervision for domestic that is domestically systematically important banks will be finalized by rbi for india so what are all the um, uh, india banks, domestically important banks in india domestically systematically important banks in india is number 1 sbi number 2 icici recently they have added hdfc three banks have been identified they have given five buckets also five buckets depending on its a grading system and these banks which have been identified as two big to fail banks have to maintain additional requirement of capital additional capital they have to maintain so this is what you have to see the totally what all the important introduction important matters included in uh, what is known as um, this uh, basel 3 basel 3 introduced domestically systematically important banks these banks are too big to fail that is lender list rbi inter, inter included icici hdfc and sbi hdfc is the latest addition these banks are very important banks collapsing which the entire physical system will 
fiscal system will collapse. So Basel Committee on Banking Supervision identified globally, systematically important banks. RBI declared a list of domestically, systematically important banks every year in August, remember. So with this we end global, that is what is known as Basel 1, Basel 2 and Basel 3. In the next class, we will see the other part important topics. Thank you.